Well, hello everyone and welcome to the first of our series of our, our fall brown bags for 2014. And I'm delighted today to introduce Pat Donahue from the Career Center. Uh, she's going to be talking to us about LinkedIn and the positive uses that we can all find for using LinkedIn. And I'm very excited to learn more because I'm one of those that needs to know more <laughs> about LinkedIn. So thank you very much for presenting for us today. If you have questions, we're going to have a time for that, but because we are filming today, raise your hand. I'll be glad to get the mic to you so we can record your question. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody, and um, congratulations on, on coming out for this. Um, I hope uh, that you uh, learned something about LinkedIn that you didn't know. Uh, those of you who are on it, I hope you expand your ideas of how to use it. Um, so, and I will be, you know, soliciting your advice and experiences as well as uh, sharing my own. So, I am just a LinkedIn junkie. I just, I, it's just, it's one of the most um, exciting to me uh, uh, tools that are out there now, and it is one of the most powerful. So, it is, it is really essential that our students get on board with this. And that means you are the influencers of our students, so I want you to get on board with this, okay? And how can you do that if, you, if you're not that familiar with it or you're, you're not, if you, if you don't have a context for why it is a powerful tool, all right? So, um, like a, let's see, a good uh, teacher, Here's what our goals are for today, our learning outcomes, I hope. I'm going to share with you what it is and what it's not, and uh, you all can jump in with me here, and why you want to be on it. I'm going to give you some of my 10 reasons are about why you yourself professionally um, would be interested in being on it, and why you should be on LinkedIn because of the importance of it to our students. All right, so. Uh, so, why LinkedIn? Why is it important? Um, what it is? Can I have a show of hands of how many of you are on LinkedIn? Yes, okay. <laughs> the majority, I'm very happy to hear that. So, um, so you have some idea of what it is, right? Um, it is an online networking tool. It is profiles of individuals and companies. I will share with you some of those numbers shortly. It is job and internship postings galore. It, easy, easy, easy to get to. And groups by areas of professional interest. There is not any interest in this room, I think, in the, in the academic or professional areas that would not have at least one group um, created by LinkedIn, or you can create your own. You can start your own. This is not, well, let me tell you what it's not. <laughs> it is not Facebook. It's funny. As students, uh, they, they start to indicate their birth date and they're single and other things like, no, no, this is not Facebook. We don't care whether you're single. This is a professional site. Um, it's not easy to use if you don't already understand networking. Again, and that's why it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, preaching to everyone I can that it's important for us to convey in whatever role we interact with students what networking is and why this can be used. Uh, it, 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 it does so much of the connecting for you, okay? So, all right, so this is, uh, I think these four facts that uh, I've collected, I think will tell you why you want to know more about LinkedIn. Fact number one, 2006, LinkedIn had fewer than 10 million users. They started, I think, in 2003, 2004. I was not yet in the career field, career counseling field, but I had not heard of it maybe until a couple years ago. You can see uh, 2006, we had fewer than uh, 10 million viewers. It's uh, Increasing, 2011 looks like we have maybe 137, 138,000 viewers, uh, users. Fact number two, June 2013, 259 million users. Okay, we're looking at exponential numbers here. I'm not a math major, but we're going from 137 million to 259 million, almost doubled, all right? That tells you a lot that, that people are getting on board with it that it is being used much more heavily than it has, um, has in the past. And there is nothing else out there like LinkedIn. 
Um, there's a lot of social uh, networking sites, but nothing like LinkedIn. Fact number three, in 2011, 73% of all employers use LinkedIn to search for candidates. Yes, they use Twitter a little bit. Yes, they are on Facebook, but LinkedIn was the big game. And 2013, 96%, okay? 96% of all employers use it in some way. So how do they use it? <sighs> Posting jobs and internships. I just, I couldn't believe how many I found just in putting this uh, workshop together in areas that I'm honestly not as familiar with as some others, biochemistry. Um, uh, somebody came into me once and wanted to be a mortician. I, I had no experience of it. I could actually get information on here about you know, how they do that. Uh, keeping tabs on potential candidates. It is becoming nowadays um, uh, a given that if you are not on LinkedIn, I'm gonna to begin to wonder how serious you are about your job search, okay? And certainly, as you look at the top tier companies, the more competitive companies, you have to be on LinkedIn if you wanna work for a, a Google or a, uh, an eBay or um, any of the large companies, the, the name brands. Uh, so they wanna see that you're on there and they don't wanna just see uh, Pat Donahue, student at Stockton College. That's worse than not being on there, okay? That's not a good uh, profile, all right? They're gonna contact them to, uh, to about openings. My sister um, uh, was um, between jobs and she didn't know about LinkedIn, so I went and gave her a tutorial and um, she, just, she just went crazy with it. I don't know how many people she's connected. Everybody she ever worked with, um, everyone she went to college with, every college that she went to, um, and she was taught by a, um, a recruiter, a, a, you know, a, somebody working with her, taught to use keywords so that recruiters came to look for her. She specializes in call center operations and catalog operations. So she put certain words in there and they came and found her. It just, I mean, it was, it's not magic, it's very specific. Um, and vetting people prior to an interview. Uh, it's actually very cool. I realize that most of you are not in the job market, so not to worry. There are plenty of reasons to, con to use this even so. You're in the job market, great. But you can actually look up the person you're gonna interview with prior to that. You can find out who they are, what their, what their history is, what uh, some of them even have some of their outside interests, okay? Very, uh, very cool thing to be able to do. So, so what? What does this have to do with you as faculty and staff? I think you uh, have some idea where, where, where I'm going with this. Um, as I say, I'm gonna, what's in it for me, I'm gonna give you some, some personal reasons you wanna use this, but also why you, uh, we all work with students, uh, how, that, how that plays in. Uh, this is a very broad uh, generalization. Um, uh, it's not uh, at all of our students, but it does represent a, a mindset that we are seeing in our traditional age students, the millennial generation, right? I deserve a trophy, okay? I, every kid gets a trophy. I deserve that trophy and an A in every class, all the classes you teach, right? You get a lot of pushback if you give somebody a B plus. And we know about grade inflation, it's real. So. All I need is that diploma, and the job offers are gonna come rolling in, right? Very unrealistic expectations about that piece of paper and that process. We, we see the majority of students either right at the end of senior year, or we were very busy this summer with students who graduated and found out, whoops, not so easy, who finally came up for air and realized, hmm, this is not, not happening quickly, and it is much that process is much slower nowadays because of the, the job market and um, because there are more college students, more college grads out there. So that's where the students are coming from. Here's what employers say, and this is a direct quote from, she, I think we had the panel right in this room from a school principal who was a graduate of Stockton, and here's what she said. I don't wanna have to work to get candidates. I expect them to come find us. Okay, so what do we got here? We got a perfect storm, or not to mix metaphors, we have kind of a collision. Um, sorry, a very primitive uh, demonstration of you know me 
coming along with my expectations of how it's going to be and what the workplace reality is. Okay, and that's what uh, that's why I'm on a mission to really talk up LinkedIn, uh, doing more presentations and make house calls, uh, working with anybody individually. But every one of you um, here today, and every one of you who are tuning in later to watch this, can. Be, be very proactive just by creating your own profile to help students with theirs. So all the more of a reason for us to be on LinkedIn. Okay, but I promised you a top 10, uh, and that's what we're gonna do. And it's not in David Letterman order particularly. It's, um, I've got the 10 best reasons uh, I can think of to be on LinkedIn. The first four are really related to you, yourselves, professionally. Uh, and academically, um, and the other six are related to how you can work with students with this uh, tool. So the first thing you can do is you can enhance and advance your own career interests. As I say, many of you are probably not in the job market, but and unfortunately I'm going to have to toggle back and forth here. Okay, so the first person I'm going to use is our buddy Earl Benjamin, who's a Stockton grad, by the way, but you also know him as a chemistry professor. Okay, so he has a fairly robust profile on here. Um, I, um, he's got, you know, where he's gone to school, he's got his background. Students can see how he got where he is. You can see some of his areas of interest. Bless you, forensic science. Um, he's got a publication, which the only words make sense to me are type two diabetes. But this is an area of interest. He and his brother, I think, is a co-author. Co um, I don't believe Ellis has a profile. But Earl is out there with his, um, uh, one of his career interests. He also has identified other areas. Again, some of them you know, not, I'm not familiar with. But he and his students can track other things by, just by following those um, things. So I'm going to click on. Western blotting. Um, apparently this has um, uh, interest to people in the, um, um, in the uh, corporate world. It, it, it has to do with manufacturing a product that gets sold. So you can see up here in this uh, left-hand corner, we can look at people, we can look at jobs related to this, we can look at companies related to this, we can look at groups related to this, we can look at schools that have these programs ongoing. We can look at posts, and I think, um, Paula, you were just mentioning that there are a lot of uh, professionals and, um, and students who create blogs, and they can, you can track and get updated on their blogs. That's one of my other reasons for wanting to join. So, so you can, Ben is a um, Stockton alum, uh, so, so they can see other people, students could see other people, or you professionally can see other people who are out there who have um, an interest in Western blotting. Um, and you can see jobs for this, all right? You can see groups for this. Pierce Western Blotting, there are discussion groups, there are 52 members. Here's in vitro molecular imaging, it's got 137 members. These are people that Professor Benjamin can reach out to any time and have conversations, have discussions. They post um, calls for papers uh, on your um, journals uh, and for conferences, and there are companies. So let's say a student has been working with Professor Benjamin and wants to know, wow, where can I take this? Where could I um, find work? I, I have companies, there are companies there that, will, uh, that they can connect to, all right? Pretty cool stuff. Um, all right, that was just, that was a quickie on reason number one. All right, from the current slide. Okay, you can connect with others in your field of interest, and I think I, I kind of just showed you how you do that. You, um, you can create a discussion group for yourself. You can um, connect with other uh, groups. You can reach out with other people, people, former colleagues, uh, people who went to your same school, uh, people who were, who were at a conference that you went to recently. And it's especially useful when you are, have interdisciplinary interest. Um, I'm going to show you Diane Holtzman's uh, profile. And she happens to have an interest in things like, she has a very good profile, I think. Um, you can see you know, where her specialties, management skills, consulting marketing, distance education, and assessment. And Diane is really a, a resident expert here on campus in ePortfolios. So 
Here's what Diane has, uh, probably she may herself have been uh, created, but she's got all her interests there. And every one of those categories leads to connections, leads to groups, leads to discussions, leads to news and trends, leads to people who have the same interests. So uh, outside of your own uh, particular academic interest or research interest, you can go into these. She's got curri curriculum development. She has groups, e-assessment in practice. Um, she's got distance learning groups. She's got a South Jersey business group, which makes sense for someone who's in the um, business uh, studies. She's got e-portfolio e communities, right? So this is really handy when you've got interests like curriculum assessment or something outside of, um, of your academic interests. For those of you who are professionals here, um, you can see where, you know, somebody is, there's event uh, services all over. You can connect with anybody in event services. Um, you can connect by size of institution, by location, by lots of different um, 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 parameters. Due to reason number three, uh, keeping tabs on your grads. Um, we all know this is very important uh, and it's also very hard to do. Um, but we can do this in a couple of different ways. You can do this um, I mean, there's, there's, when we go, when we work the open houses and, and when you're at the open houses, this is what parents ask. They want to know, well, what can they do with a degree in dance or creative writing? Where do our students go? So uh, there are a couple of different ways to do this. I'll show you one of them. This is one of the things I don't like about it is those crazy endorsements. Um, okay, so I have my connections here. I have Richard Stockton College. I can take a look at students and alumni, everybody who's on LinkedIn, whether they are in a particular alumni group or not, okay? So we've got 17,000 students, uh, um, grads, I'm sorry, who, have, who are on LinkedIn. Uh, not, it's, not a, it's not a survey we can you know, take to the bank, but you can find out where your students have gone, generically speaking. So, most of them, as you would expect, are in the Philadelphia area. There's a fair number in, um, in the New York City area. But we can, f we can drill down even farther. And let's take a major, uh, let's do communications. Whoops. See what, I mean, it's, it's going to have, it's not necessarily done by major. But now it has, did I? OK, so we've got, sorry, my mouse is a little. Okay, all right, so this is where students are specifically, and yes, there's a fair number of them in something that, that uh, is labeled as sales, but um, a fairly large number in media and communications, in marketing, in operations. Um, that's a good thing. Now, here's the really fun part, and this is why if you are connected, these are people I am connected to. Uh, Erin Eddy is, um, um, I think she's actually on our alumni board. Matt just got a fabulous job. Um, he really uh, did a really good job but, um, of uh, getting an internship where it, it landed him. Um, this is an alum who just came back for a career panel, Angela, and she's in an area of communications. So I have the ability to find out, you know, it, kind of broadly speaking, but I also can find out I'm connected. I have a lot of connections. I am, um, I think I'm 454. So if you connect with me, which you, you know, um, you want to be careful who you connect with. It's just like Facebook. You don't do this randomly. But I will connect with any student or any alum uh, of Stockton unless I look at the profile and it looks pretty sketchy. I mean, I, okay, I just, you know, be, you want to be mindful of that. But this opens up to me. Here's Don, we're doing a, a, a health science panel for, for um, you know, what can students do with a health sciences degree? There's somebody who is a recruiter at uh, Bayada, who's an alum. And um, those of you who are on uh, um, LinkedIn know there's like a first connection. It's a, I'm directly connected, so I might be connected to uh, D. And um, a second connection is that I, somebody that she is connected to, I am one, I am a second degree connection, if you will. So I am able to reach out to them because I am connected to her. A third degree, I would have to, I think I would have to ask her to give me an introduction and then I could be introduced. But there are plenty of first and second uh, connections out there, all right? And the, 
you know, I'm going to, I'll do some math for you to show you how easy it is to build that um, circle. Uh, I'm sorry, reason number four. Let's see. Keep tabs on your grabs. We did. Um, uh, sorry. Keeping up with news and trends in your field. And again, um, I think I, I showed you this already, but there are groups that you can follow. Um, Donna Albano's uh, profile is very good for this. She's in hospitality. And she is following um, a number of uh, activities like uh, women in gaming, women in the casinos, uh, international uh, hospitality. Um, I think it's Asian tourism. She has a number of different groups. So I know we all get emails that we want to read, right? I'm not even going to tell you the number that I just hit of emails that I'm still trying to get to. And then there are those ones from your professional um, life and, and sources that you want to read, but you just keep kind of putting them there. But you can kind of go into your LinkedIn once a week. You, could get, uh, you, could, you can do settings about when you get notified. And you can see some of the top news in your field. All right? You can see the trends. Um, and later on, I'll talk about that as a fabulous uh, teaching tool for your students as well. All right? Um, so, all right, reason number five, uh, helping students to explore career fields. Um, again, we are now uh, in the zone of the, the, the reasons that will apply to you in terms of working with your students, okay? Um, so, um, we don't know every profession in the, in the Career Center. We know how to find out about those. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. She's helping me out here. We, we don't know all the fields. And I would hazard a guess that you, as preceptors and faculty, you don't know every type of field within your, um, your uh, discipline that students may come to you and ask about, all right? But this is, this is I just discovered this maybe this summer. Uh, again, I, I love to play on this puppy. Searching. Um, um, it, you know, within your discipline, I, I can, uh, I've shown you, like with uh, Earl Benjamin, you can see how, you know, he could easily direct a student right to something in his field, jobs, companies, people who are out there doing that work. All right, I'm going to pick something like uh, teaching abroad. We, we, there's, I think, a growing interest in that, but that's a field, it's like, uh, you, you have a student who comes to you, whatever, whatever field that you represent, you, you don't, why would you know about teaching abroad? But you can actually send um, your students to search something like that. So again, looking at people, jobs, companies, groups, you can see uh, Lillian had uh, a broad experience. I don't know if she's uh, had teaching. There's companies that you can have your students look at to, to explore, okay, how does this work? What kind of companies are out there? Um, you can, again, more people who have teaching abroad experience, and there are job postings, okay? So even though you don't, aren't familiar with that particular kind of a field, you can at least get them started um, and you know, it, use it as a teaching tool. You can always, of course, send them to us or um, send them to academic advising uh, for, for the particulars of their training. But, um, you can use LinkedIn as a resource for just any type of uh, field. So, uh, reason number six. All right. Help students locate jobs and internships. I think you, you have seen that function already of what I can do. Um, the internships will be posted just as jobs are. If the, the student wants to look at a particular company, they can, uh, companies have profiles, very, very robust ones. I mean, remember, what is that number? 96% of them are using LinkedIn. So the very smart companies are, have a very, very robust profile on LinkedIn. They've got, you can see the, you can find out who you know at that company or who you might be able to reach out to. You see a lot about careers, you see active job postings, you see all the news about those companies. So your students um, and grads can, can find out where, where they might uh, find those jobs, either locally, regionally, or across the country. And actually, I think LinkedIn is in 200 countries. Remember, 259 million users. Okay. Uh, 
see, sorry, the, the link wasn't working in this room for some reason. Okay, this one I think is, is very important, showing students the importance of networking. Okay, remember, LinkedIn is a networking tool, but if they don't know how that works, how networking works, they will not be able to derive the benefits of it. Um, and that's where you come in. You understand it, it, networking. I would hazard a guess that there's no one in this room who hasn't you know, had some opportunity, some experience, some job that was obtained by networking, that they heard about, that you heard about through someone else, okay? Um, and there are you know, very good, solid reasons for that, that if someone uh, refers me to someone else that I have never met before, I already know something about them. I used to work at Comcast. Um, they would pay us a bounty of $300 if we brought someone into the company and they stayed at least three months. Now, why would they do that? Comcast. <laughs> why would they be giving away money? Because it's, it, it, the retention rate for someone who has been brought in by a, an employee in good standing is, is greater. Okay, so it's, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just a bit, I mean, we do it all the time on Stock Talk, right? Do you have a plumber? Do you have uh, somebody who, who babysits the dogs? So, you're, you have tremendous influence on the students, and this is an important um, um, message to convey to them um, why they want to network. So tell them your story, and if you have a LinkedIn profile, you can also show them uh, that story. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to go to an alumni group, the, the Stockton alumni group. Under my interests are my groups. So... And this is the, there are, there are a number of, um, you can see I've got some, I'm not in the job market. I love my job. This is, I expect this to be the one that I go out on. But it, I am able to connect with a lot of different entities. And, and um, but the Richard Stockton College of New Jersey alumni, I, I use this frequently because it's part of my job. But I also, it's sort of a hobby to see where people have gone and to find out, um, what happened to a particular student I enjoyed working with. So there are, I think, are we up to 3,000? We're very close to 3,000 members already. And again, just like the LinkedIn numbers, these are growing exponentially. As you get to a certain critical mass, it just increases. Students can join this as well as alumni. And Sarah uh, Ferro is the one who will um, you know, invite you in just to uh, approve. So students can can be active in this group, and um, it's just like the mentor database that I manage. They can use this as a mentor database. Um, not uh, there are the, there is a focus of uh, job searching with LinkedIn, but there is also that uh, that interest in reaching out to other professionals. Right. So. Um, Students use this, and they can they find that they can talk to other folks and uh, connect with them. So, um, I had a student come in recently who was interested in photography. Sometimes I send them to media services, but this is another thing that they can do: is they can try to find a keyword, see who might be um, out there working in a photography business, and uh, talk to them. So, um, there's various people. There's Aaron again. Um, there's somebody, okay, uh, Nancy has, uh, I'm not connected to Nancy, but I can connect to her because she and I have somebody in common. Um, usually it, it'll tell me actually who I, there we go. We've got a, I've got several people in common with uh, Nancy, but I, I've never met Nancy that I know of, but I can actually follow her career. I can see how she moved from one stage to the next. I can see what she's doing professionally and just like an e-portfolio, I can also see Nancy's work. Pretty cool, right? Um, so I would tell a student to go and um, talk to that person, reach out to her on LinkedIn. She, you'll already, it's already a learning tool just to read the profile. But then I would encourage them to reach out to them and just you know, ask for advice, maybe get together if they're in the area geographically. See, I don't know if this person belongs to any groups. Um, Usually photographers are, you know, independent. Um, but there, there's all the ways that you can contact her. Oh, there's a group for wedding and portrait photographers. How about that? That's probably a good group for somebody interested in learning this craft, learning the field, how to put the business together. Good place for them to go. All right. All right. Uh, so where are we? I think 
We are on reason number eight. Ta-da. And, okay, reason number eight, whoops. <laughs> Teaching students how to research companies that can hire them. Uh, this is very important. Um, I wish I had a nickel for every time I go into a class and you know we're, we're working on resumes or interviewing or whatever and I say, well, what's your dream job? Or what's your dream company? Who do you want to work for? And I, they don't know. They don't have an idea yet. They haven't thought about it yet or they haven't figured out who can hire them and who they would, the small company, big company, medium size. Um, um, they, they haven't given this a lot of thought, but they need to. And when you come across students who are very um, eager or looking for those competitive type positions, as I said before, they must be where they need to show up on the radar of those companies or they will not even be considered, okay? So you, um, what that looks like, it means that you wanna be following a company. And um, <clears throat> I'm gonna pick I'll pick a company like Merck. All right, I think we've all heard of Merck. Merck can hire tech, they can hire HR, they can hire, of course, the scientists. Uh, there's a lot of different, uh, they can hire sales, um, marketing folks. So uh, Merck, of course, has a very strong presence on the website. They've got, you know, their, you know, their sell, their story about themselves. Um, they've got their website, they've got the information about them, 10,000 employees. They, um, they have job postings, uh, uh, recent ones, and they've got another site just for the job posting. They, this is also very helpful. A lot of students don't, uh, uh, you know, in the same way that they have maybe some very limited ideas about their career fields, they have very limited ideas about companies that could employ them. So I thought this was a very handy feature. Here, here's other pharmaceuticals right there that they can shoot for. All of them, of course, very, very competitive, the top tier of pharmaceutical companies. But here's a cool thing. So I am Pat Donahue. I've got 454 connections. <clears throat> so not all of them are my family. Fair, fair number of them are my family. I mean, you can, if you have a big family, you can, you can get your connections up very quickly. All right, so I'm gonna grab uh, this person, Dave Watson. I don't know, I can connect to him directly for some reason. We, we know somebody in common. I'm not sure who we know in common. Oh, I know Andrew Duffy. I worked with, I, when I, I worked with employers when I was at Drexel University. And Andrew was a recruiter, so we worked really closely, and then he ended up coming to Drexel, and I think he actually does my job now. So, and Andrew is somebody we worked very well with together. I would have no trouble, you know, asking Andrew about this person and then maybe connecting with him, you know, in, in a personal way, all right? But again, there, there's where I know how to network. A student might not know, well, well now what? What do I do? I, I know this person and I have somebody in common with them, what do I do next? So um, I, have, I have some advice and some cheat sheets that I am happy to share with you all if you want a, a cheat sheet for yourself and also one that you can use for students to, to you know, give them some ideas. We have scripts posted for how, do you, how you reach out to an alum or to an employer and how do you do an information interview, how do you, you know, what kind of questions do you ask them, okay? So I think you know, that Students need to have a, this is a very grown up thing to do, to network, right? It's very grown up. Uh, so they, they need things like a script and they also need <clears throat> your encouragement to have them do that. So I can reach out to this person. He is in the HR area, as a matter of fact. So um, it doesn't really matter what, um, what field he's in, but you know he happens to be in HR. But I could reach out to him and I could ask him some things about Merck. He could probably, being an HR person, he could probably tell me about some of the competitive uh, internship programs they have. You know, in a more um, direct way, I could get information from him, or about you know how do you how do you get to Merck? Do you have to do an internship first before they'll even consider you? Um, and also, if I knew a, um, someone who was interested in human resources, again, I could show them this person's profile, and I can, I can pretty much track how he got where he is, okay? Um, he started out, yeah, 
start out, let me see what his degrees are. He's got a, um, a management information systems degree added on to what is essentially an HR degree. Uh, wow, he went to Penn State. <laughs> I can't imagine how many connections you got. Their alumni group, do you realize one out of every six people, college grads has gone to Penn State. That's, that's quite a network, but hey, we have 3,000 grads that, uh, that our students can reach out to. But this person, you know, undoubtedly, um, he's got a very, very good profile. And he also is a recruiter in some capacity, so he is probably using LinkedIn to find people. But if I were interested in Merck, I would want to make myself known to him. I would want to follow if he's got any kind of a, a blog. Um, or I would certainly be following Merck to see what kind of news. Uh, what, what's going on, what the trends are in there, what their company considers important. All right. Ah, let's see. Okay. Reason number nine. All right. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Help students articulate the skills they're learning. I know we all need to do this, right? This is, uh, they, they are taking your class for a specific uh, set of um, goals. I mean, you know what they are, and I know, uh, I know m most of us in this room teach, you, you, you know what they are, but you constantly have to remind them this is, you know, what, attach it to their career field, attach it to their goals. So, um, um, again, I, I wish I had a nickel for every science student that I've seen who does not have their lab skills on their resume. I mean, they're like, oh, really? And I think, you know, part of it is they think they, they feel, well, I'm not an expert in it, but lab skills are part of your, that's, the, you know, that's why you're in those labs. That's why you have to go that extra time and you don't even get credit for all the time you spend in a lab. Yes, the number one thing, if you're going for a job, you know, in, the, in, a, in a lab or a research company is what do you know how to do? Okay, okay, you have a degree, but fine, what lab skills? And you must enumerate them. So that's just, that's just for starters. But I wanna show you an incredible resume. Uh, a student, he's actually still a current student, but uh, uh, articulating, really articulating to a high level. Again, you are doing, I hate to use the word branding, because uh, that sounds so slick to me. What, I, what this is, is it, Anyone who goes looking for an opportunity, you need to tell people why they should be interested in you. That is your job, to articulate, here's what I'm really good at. So, and this, here's Jason Osterley. I think, I, don't, I think he did this all on his own. I can't take any credit for this. Uh, but this student is a, an accounting student, but he has done, and, and we've chatted. Um, I think he, um, I think I did, I talked about LinkedIn and he wanted me to look at his profile and I was blown away by it. Good professional photo and, and photos are one of the bells and whistles about LinkedIn that they're really awesome. And you can, I'll show you um, uh, the, the next profile, I'm gonna show you uh, the student. You can, if you're a person who's out there mucking in the marsh or you are an artist, um, you can, that's what you can express in that photo. And, and Say what you want, we are human beings, we are creatures, we need, it, it helps to see someone's photo, okay? So he has done an excellent job, accounting clerk intern at um, ETS. I mean, he knew to put that in his headline, his billboard, uh, if you will. Um, and what it says here, I'll read this for you because you probably can't see it. Meticulous finance student who undertakes complex projects, meets constricted deadlines and delivers superb performance applies entrepreneurial skills and financial planning along with leadership and loyalty. Um, he possess, practic pr possess practical knowledge to obtain an internship position with a well-established organization. This is a really good profile. Um, he's, he's an accounting student. I mean, well, uh, accounting, what can you say? Good with numbers, attention to detail? You better be good with, uh, with numbers or pay attention to detail, unlike myself. But the, he went on beyond that to articulate and, and to, you know, he, he, well, I don't remember the process for how he got that internship, but it is a competitive one, and he's using it very effectively. Okay, that is an awesome resume. As I said, he's a sophomore. 
He's a sophomore. Watch out for this one. He's a sophomore. He is definitely going to end up, if he has aspirations to be in, in CPA firm, he will be there. So um, this is another aspect let me just mention to you as we go by, that you do want to be judicious about who you connect with, all right? So that because I can see everybody that you're connected with in one way or another. Um, um, they, they start to do a lot of other things like ads. Um, people similar to Jason, I don't even understand wh why you want that function. This is one of my less favorite uh, aspects, uh, things about, um, about uh, LinkedIn. But this person, he's got Morgan Stanley, he's got ETS, he's got Procter & Gamble, Thomson Reuters. The student is, you know, he's following important competitive type companies. Right, so and he's, that's exactly what he needs to be doing. It's just it's unusual to see this in someone um, that 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 early in their career. But he also has got his 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 personal information, which, and this is what happens is you get birthday notices. Oh, happy birthday, Peter Hagen. It, Peter's having a birthday today. So you know I, I, that's great, but I don't need to know when everybody I'm connected with is having a birthday. So. Again, but I think students, that's kind of a holdover from, um, from their Facebook um, sense. Uh, you know, not 20-year-old photo or um, glamorous. I, I mean, I have seen some, you know, it's, like it, it's clearly cut out from they were at a wedding or perhaps at a, at a bachelor party. I mean, that is not good. But um, no, I don't think your age is, you, you, you know, I you can't really conceal your age at some point anyway so um, no I'm just saying birthday is kind of irrelevant it's irrelevant that Jason's single honestly um, but it's okay it's okay this is a very very good profile I am definitely going to keep my eye on Jason um, and to say why well, I, I don't think any of us in the Career Center can take credit for for um, that but I'm certainly going to use his profile as a model um, okay, so we did number nine. Yay, we're coming to the end here. Um, number 10, encourage students to build a profile on LinkedIn, okay? I really, really, um, you know, encourage you to do that, even if you don't take class time to do it. Uh, we are doing more LinkedIn presentations than we have in the past, which suggests to me that it's kind of rising to the level of awareness, broader awareness. We, we even have students kind of wandering in and saying, yeah, my mom said I should be on LinkedIn, not knowing what it is. But it, 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 and we've got groups like the PRSSA and the uh, Marketing and Management Society are asking us to do LinkedIn for their membership. And we're, we're really, really going to promote it because, as I say, underneath it is that principle of networking, which is the very, it's the way you learn about careers. It's the way you learn from people in those careers and it's the way that you find uh, that trail of breadcrumbs that brings you to those careers, right? So um, uh, I would ask you to um, have students build a profile and here's what I did. Um, I manage a team of, we, we call them career ambassadors now, uh, very talented people kind of like Jason who are very focused on their careers and um, who are you know, usually very involved in campus activities. And I asked each of them to build themselves a LinkedIn profile or keep updated the one that they had because they all were doing internships over the summer. So my student, uh, Emma Walton, uh, built one. Uh, when, when I explained to her what it was and she just took off running. So uh, I don't know if any of you know Emma, but you're about to learn about her. She goes by Emma, but her name is Emily. All right, so here's Emma's profile. She's outdoors, right? Outdoors education. So she says, is this picture all right to use? I'm like, absolutely, absolutely. You can still kind of see what she looks like, but she's out there doing what she wants to be doing in her career field. She is a um, combined major, education and environmental studies. So, um, she built this, she did a very nice job on her summary, senior environmental science major, also enrolled in the education certification program, experience in both environmental education and traditional classroom settings, um, wants to be in a middle school science or math uh, setting when she graduates. So 
Um, I did not tell her any of this other stuff. She Essentially, it's a resume. You have at least what your resume has on it. But here's what she did. And she's going to be a great teacher. Here's what she did. She's, she added these other bells and whistles. Again, this is a portfolio. Um, let's see, was this going to open for me? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, this, was, this was the paper that she submitted for her internship experience. It's a write-up. Uh, this was a photo of... Yeah, I think there's some kind of uh, restriction on this particular site, but that's a photo, you know, obviously on the job this summer. She, oh, here down here, she has a teacher portfolio. This is excellent. And this is, remember the, the person way back at the beginning of the presentation I said, who said, you have to come find us. Here's Emma's portfolio. This person, if they're considering interviewing Emma, they can find her on here. They, can, they will receive her application in the usual way, maybe, but they can look her up on here, and they will find someone who has really used a tool very effectively. And this is a paper uh, she did. Uh, Emma has, you know, in addition to the outdoor education, she has very, sci uh, very solid science creds. Um, so she did some research with, um, uh, here on campus. All right. So, uh, and Emma, uh, Emma's brand new to this. She has six connections. But I'm one of them. <laughs> so she has connections to, I think, 454 other people through me. She doesn't even have to ask me. She can connect. But you know, she, may, she may see somebody on my uh, uh, people that I know, and um, she can connect with them. I believe she connected with all of the, all of the other ambassadors. These are my other, uh, this was a, a previous person. Michael, who is a mentor for us and uh, who is at Deloitte, um, very, did very successful, um, very focused career. So, um, so those are my 10 best reasons, all right? And then let me uh, mention a few caveats, which I kind of already did. Caveats, again, you need to understand what networking is, all right? That's why you can't just throw a student on here, all right? You can send them to us or you can create your profile and kind of do a, you know, a, a mini teaching um, session on it. You need to know how to find information. And I don't know about your experience, but I'm finding uh, that, that um, a lot of students don't know how to look for things. I used to be a reporter, but uh, you know, and, and the internet is like, wow, just, there's no end to what you can find out. Whether it's true or not, that's a different thing. But Students are not, I mean, they, sometimes some of them even say like, oh, where's that on our website? And, and, and want me to take them there. Like, really? Do you want me to show you the parking or where Townsend Residential Life Center is? So, so th to me, that's an extremely important across the board skill that we all need to be telling them, teaching them how to find information because this will not be nearly as effective for them if they don't understand that. What, how they can just keep going and going and going and going and going with connections and information, all right? You can only have one career focus. Um, and more and more, especially in the, this day and age with the economy the way it is, we're going to see students cobbling you know, different kinds of interests together. But you have to pick one. You, you can't really do two. Um, I, I, don't, I can't think of a way you could. If anybody has ideas, I would be very open to them. A um, couple more. Ah, this, the birthdays, anniversaries, really. Um, and random endorsements. I, I don't know, you can, you can, if you get endorsed by people, and then, I mean, you know, that's nice. I mean, that's flattering. Uh, you, first of all, you don't, it doesn't have to show on your profile. But second of all, um, I get endorsements from people I don't even know. I know I don't know you. Come on. Why are you endorsing me? I mean, you want to show up on my site or something? I mean, that there's to me, there's not much value in endorsements. There are recommendations, and I think those are extremely important. They show up. Uh, I had a friend who was uh, she moved to New Hampshire and she was in the job market, and I wrote a reference for her. Um, I write. I'm a good reference. I'm very particular, very specific, and give examples. But my reference for her is on her LinkedIn profile. So that, and I know I've just, and I'm in the middle of a, a job search, uh, a search committee, um, and we've been calling references. But you can hear what I have to say about Brenda Cannon, you know, before, and, and that I hope will make you want to interview her. All right, you already know something about her, so I think those are effective. But the endorsements, I don't get. They're just, I don't know. They keep adding. 
bells and whistles. And I don't know, I'm still trying to get used to Windows 8 and whatever else I had to upgrade to. So, and my homepage to me looks like a very messy Pinterest page. It's, it, I don't, you know, I, I can probably manage it a little bit more, but um, that is the nature of, I think, all social media. That it just, it changes by, it's driven by how we're using it, probably at the back, the back end by, you know, some kind of uh, money, uh, money operations or, you know, these search, op they're gleaning information from it, I suppose. But that's just, you know, just you kind of have to get used to it. Anything that's growing this rapidly is going to change a lot, and that's a good thing. So um, I'm just going to encourage you to build a profile. If you, um, if you don't have one already, I think most of you did, which is uh, very encouraging. And if you want to, um, they actually, when you go into your profile, it'll, it'll kind of grade you on how your profile is. I think I'm expert, but I, I, can't, I didn't get to the, the top one. I really want to get to the top one. I'm not sure what I have to do for that. I think I have to get recommendations. But it'll give you feedback on, well, you know, you're a little weak in this area. All right? But, uh, but uh, any of us uh, can help you with it, and we'd be happy to help you build your profile in a way that you, you can then maybe make some connections and reach out. Uh, in ways that make sense to you professionally, right? And also, I if you're working with students, you can show them yours, all right? Um, yeah, mine needs to be a little bit more robust, but if you connect to five people, right? I'm not a math person, but if you connect to five people, um, you know, you in the middle, you connect to five people. Those five people, let's say they have five people. That's 25 people right off the bat, okay? And um, one of the, the, the kind of little learning tools I use when I teach the career development class is uh, the four F's. Friends and family, family of friends, friends of family, right? So you could, you could just start there and you'd already be connecting to a lot of different kinds of folks, all right? It's, it's amazing how many of our students' parents are on LinkedIn. I mean, they're, they're probably you know, changing jobs or, or have been forced to change jobs. Um, but uh, they're definitely raising the bar um, and, and the awareness, students' awareness of the need to it, for it. And then please, please engage with your students or you know, any uh, students or grads that you come in contact with um, to, you know, to get them started. And you can always send them to us or send them to a workshop. Um, do we have any questions? Okay, I'm on. All right. Yeah, so I'm just wondering as to whether you should use your personal email or work email. You just use LinkedIn. You don't have to use anything. It's like Craigslist. This LinkedIn is your, that's how I would contact you. You can add an email if you wish. There's a the little thing under your profile. There's contact information, and you can put in e any email that you would like people to use. But again, this is a professional site, so... Um, I don't know. I, have, I, don't, I just use the LinkedIn. That's how people contact me. And then once I know who they are, I kind of bring them into my own, my work email. I don't ever give out my home email because I don't use it for anything personal. Okay. That would be my advice. And anybody have any experiences they, you know, or, or other bells and whistles about it? Well, really, the reason I would... Okay. Paula's going to with the um, for the email I am job looking so if mm -hmm. you use the Stockton email and then you change and leave Stockton then you have to change your email and yes. so that's a problem and if you don't want your present employer to know you're looking that's also another problem so that's why I always use my own personal yes, email. yes you do yes absolutely and it's not professional to have things go through your work yeah. email right I mean, right that's, so that's, that's why that's time. why i would always use my mm -hmm. personal but my question is is i've heard that in the future they feel that people won't even have resumes they'll just use linkedin what do you think what about you, that absolutely 96 percent already are i don't need the the um thing yes caitlin i just want to add um you had mentioned uh looking for a technique where you can do multiple career focuses. Um, we actually do a lot of these similar types of presentations, so, so I want to see what else you get out for it. Um, we work with a lot of individuals who are unemployed or underemployed, mm -hmm. and we have sat in on a presentation by another LinkedIn expert 
And um, she had recommended, and we've done this and seen a lot of um, great response, but in your headline, rather than saying, as you know, I'm the director of the retail hospitality and tourism talent network for South Jersey, what does that mean? <laughs> um, and, and so what we've done is created taglines. So if you were to look at my profile, I'm a hospitality enthusiast, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. talent acquisition, you know, I put some key things about what I, you know, if you were to read my, you know, my, just my headline, you would see that I know things about hospitality, about networking, about um, instructing and mentoring. So mm -hmm. you can get a real snapshot of who I am. And so if you were a recruiter just searching some of the basic, you know, basic information to, to return yes, you know, some top yes, candidates, absolutely. you'd it's, be able to see, you know, I can cross, oh no, I can teach about hospitality. So you can mix it up. I'm, I'm right there, Caitlin Weiss. Oh, there we go. Okay, I, I wasn't sure about your, that was your married name. I've made this successful transition. Absolutely, that's so, awesome. And and that just kind of that's a way to speak to multiple industries in in one mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. one glance. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think this is hard to do. I uh, I was in public relations and marketing. I was never a slogan person, or I was an English major. So I think I can't write short. I'm I've learned. But, but that is, that is and, and when there's actually, if uh, um, any of you who want a cheat sheet, I will be happy to send it to you, anyone who is listening, um, or, or they can attach it, um, a cheat sheet that t it shows you how to build a profile. And that, that little slogan, that's, that, that, that header at the top is very important. It's prime real estate. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that student used it very strategically mm -hmm. to say, in turn, at, Educational testing Rather services. Rather than just saying a student, which counting student at Stockton, is like which saying, is what they mostly do. Absolutely, or, yep. or the same thing for job seekers. I'll just put unemployed. Oh, well, that's unemployed a good one. under your knee. That that's well, right. you're on there. Right. That's a good thing. Talented but customer service exactly. expert. Yes, exactly. I mean, and I think that takes a lot of coaching, though. You're you're naturally good at it. Oh, thank you. Um, and I'm glad that you are working with folks who really need that kind of help. But yes, I back to your statement. I think LinkedIn's, it's easy, it's, it's, everything's right there. I can glean a lot of information about you already by this. Because there's a photo, because there's interactivity, I can, you can put blogs on here, you can put your work on here, you can put projects on here, posters, flyers. It, it's a portfolio, so you already, and you can see who I'm connected to. You can see how serious I am about my profession. It's. You know, it's, it's yeah, I, it's, it, 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 you have to, I mean, you, if you can get to have it be your friend, um, it's a very effective teaching tool uh, and reaching out tool. Um, I mean, I, I'm probably on there once a week reaching out, asking for advice or feedback or what do you do about this? I mean, I, I, we're very sharing in our profession, but I think most professions are thus <laughs> the success of LinkedIn and the groups All right. and I am very happy personally to work with you or you know send your students yes <laughs> Good. Um, do you I have students I'm in the speech pathology program I run the speech and hearing clinic mm -hmm. and um, I have a lot of students that are applying to graduate school for communication mm -hmm. disorders do you suggest wow. that they if they were to create something like this and build their resume off of it Mm -hmm. Should they use this in lieu of a resume? Should they add it to their resume? Um, I don't think you can with because things like speech. There's a very specific application process. Yes, right? but and the you're resume is almost an add-on to that. Yes, usually what, it is. And and in speech again, I don't. I would have. I would go. Here's how I would answer <laughs> that question. I would ask Amy Hadley mm -hmm. um, or whoever ask mm -hmm. you. But I would go and see how many are on here on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I haven't found a profession yet that is not on. That there are not some. I was surprised at how much the sciences are using it. I was really surprised because mm -hmm. um, I just thought, you know, they, they don't operate in that way, and it's. Um, but they do. They're, mm -hmm. they're out there, and and especially I think younger folks like uh, like Earl uh, uh, Benjamin, and he needs to get his brother on there. But mm -hmm. I would I would look and see. But I would also on the resume. Now that you say this, I would actually put a link, put my LinkedIn That's what I was profile. Thinking. I, I that occurs mm -hmm. to me. That should be on on resumes. Mm -hmm. Because I think you want to keep your written yep. resume to yep. one page, and it's pretty yeah, crisp and, it's pretty and, dry. and clear. Yeah. It's right. usually pretty dry. Right. Right. And so I See? think, if, especially if they're submitting it electronically to right. an application right. system or service, right. then to have that link on there. 
Right, that teaching student, she couldn't have put her prof profile on there. She couldn't have showed you that she was up at the Pocono Environmental Education Center. I mean, right. she, she just, just, I mean, it's just like the light bulbs went off and she took it and ran with it and showed me things that I did not know were on there. But in, in, I mean, everyone knows how competitive it is to get into grad school mm -hmm. with speech. Yeah. That would definitely take it up a notch, plus it's speech and hearing. I mean, what if you, what if you created a little lesson thing or, I mean, it's, I mean, I'm just thinking, and, and when they're out professionally, you know, when, they're, when they've done something in grad right. school that they could actually have a video on here. Well, our students, our graduate students have to do the e-portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, so to have yeah. like they that kind of documentation have up there. The goods that mm -hmm. they could put on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I, I, this is a, I have not found an area yet where there are not some there, and you can see that it's growing exponentially. Thank you, one and all. Thank you to Pat. What a Thank great you. presentation. We've encouraged us all to <laughs> get started. I hope so. <laughs> Thank you.